Hello family. Today marks the seven year anniversary of the 2010 Haitian earthquake. Now that earthquake devastated the country. Hundreds of thousands were dead. Many more were injured. Millions are still displaced. With disasters like that, we all have to deal with them. And we should stand in solidarity. God and nature is no respecter of persons and no respecter of nations. So we have to stand together. I got the opportunity for the first time to speak on the floor in support of a resolution to recognize the 2010 victims of the Haiti earthquake in the, on the assembly floor. So in this video, you'll see that speech that I did on the floor a few days ago. Also, you'll see a, a flashback. In 2010, I went to Haiti the day after the earthquake, and you'll see the news clip about that. Check it out. The almost, almost seven years to date, on Tuesday, January 12th, 2010, her, Haiti suffered a devastating earthquake that measured 7.3 on the Richter scale. It was a catastrophic event. Uh, over 150,000 people passed. Some, some measures are over 250,000 people. Over, over hundreds of thousands of people were injured and mi millions of people were displaced. But my story, but on that, day, on that very day, I had a story too. On that very day, watching what was going on on television, I couldn't stand out, sit down and just watch what was going on. That day, I flew directly to that island. I flew to Santo Domingo that shared the same island of Haiti and drove to the, to the border of, of Haiti. I don't want to relive what happened. I saw many different things there. People were alive, were buried alive. People had crushed limbs. There were many different injuries. But I saw the other side also. I saw the best of the human spirit. I saw people with very little help people with less. I saw people that worked and made their personal vehicles use as ambulances. So what does this resolution mean? We are no strangers here to catastrophic events and catastrophic disasters. Nature, God, is no respecter of persons, is no respecter of nature. Here in America, we too understand what natural disasters are. We've experienced Katrina. In New York, we've experienced Superstorm Sandy. Still today, years after those storms, New Orleans and some of our districts are still recovering. So as citizens of the world, we have to stand in solidarity with each other. We have to support each other. So I thank you, the colleagues that support this. I thank the sponsors that support this. God bless America. God bless Haiti. And God bless New York. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. People around the world have been praying for more survivors tonight. Catholics in particular are mourning a leader who did not survive. The Archbishop of Port-au-Prince was confirmed dead today. Live in the newsroom, Ida Siegel, News 4, New York. Ida, thank you. The pictures coming into the newsroom are distressing. The disaster in Haiti directly impacts hundreds of thousands of people in our area. According to census estimates, there are about 232,000 people of Haitian origin across northern New Jersey, New York City, and Long Island. More than half live in the city alone. Tom Yamas just arrived in the Dominican Republic making his way to Haiti. He is joined by a New Yorker who is desperate, we're told, for word about his relatives. Tom? That's right, Chuck. Santo Domingo right now has become an international jumping point to get into Haiti. There's really no way to get into Haiti unless you walk across the border or if you drive. The airport has been closed and there's a shortage of helicopters in the Dominican Republic. In Santo Domingo, what we've seen so far are three types of people at the airport. Aid groups, journalists, and people like Clyde Vanell, who now joins me live. Clyde, you, you're from Cambria Heights in Queens. You've, you've come to the Dominican Republic without a plan, without a way to get into Haiti, why are you here? Uh, I'm here to stand with my people. I'm here to uh, look for my family, look for friends' family. You know, as Haitians, we must stand and unite, and I must stand with my people. Talk to me about your family. You, you haven't been able to reach them since the quake hit? 
Uh, no, uh, my, my, my parents have been trying to call family. Uh, I've had friends of mine who try to call, call family, and we haven't been able to get in touch with anybody. What, what possesses someone to, to leave New York, to come here to, to the Dominican Republic and try to get into Haiti, a third world country after a massive earthquake has already rocked that, in, that entire city and that community? Uh, you know, the Haitian people are resilient people, uh, and, uh, and being of Haitian background, we must stand and unite. And, you know, they need help. And I couldn't stand and stay home and just watch. I had to come and do something about it. How do you plan on getting in? I don't know. I don't know. You know, what we, what I'm trying to find out tonight if we can, uh, if I can find out tomorrow if we, if I can drive across or find a way to get, uh, you know, get to Port-au-Prince. Clyde, you've seen the photos, you've seen the videos out of Port-au-Prince. Uh, the numbers keep rising and rising. The death toll keeps getting higher and higher. Have you prepared yourself for the worst? Uh, I'm, uh, Sorry. Okay. You know, I'll just try to do what, you know, what I can when I get there. Okay. Clive Vanell from Canberra Heights, Queens, uh, a part of New York with a very large Haitian American community. Many of those people watching this interview and probably feeling the same thing that Clyde is feeling. He's going to try to make it inside of Haiti, hopefully tomorrow morning. The sad part about all of this is that there's probably 2 million to 3 million people with stories just like Clyde.